My name is Jen Dion, and I'm an Associate Professor of Material Science and Engineering at Stanford, and also a Dreyfus Teacher Scholar. I'm coming to you from beautiful Sydney Harbour, Australia, and wanted to briefly share with you some of our work on all optical separation of enantiomers. First of all, what's an enantiomer? Well, it's a chiral structure. That is, a structure that has no superimposable mirror image, just like our hands. It turns out a lot of nature is chiral, including DNA, which is exclusively right-handed, and amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, which are exclusively left-handed. Now this homochirality of nature is one of life's greatest mysteries, but one that in the lab we haven't been quite as good at reproducing. It turns out, if you look to the agrochemical and pharmaceutical industry, about a third to half of all of the structures out there are chiral, and of those, more than 90% are sold as mixtures of both the right-handed molecule and the left-handed molecule. These would include the drug Advil, which is, which is sold as a mixture, where it's known that the wrong-handed enantiomer can actually interfere with the efficacy of the drug, and that's why it takes about 30 minutes for pain relief instead of about 10 minutes if it were an antiopure. Also, the antidepressant Prozac is sold as a mixture of both the right and left-handed molecules, where it's known that the wrong-handed enantiomer can actually give rise to some of the negative side effects like heart palpitations and headaches, and also on a lot of agrochemicals and, um, say, herbicides and pesticides, it's known that the wrong-handed enantiomer can actually uh, leave residue in soil, um, giving rise to uh, colony collapse in bees, and also organ failure in birds and fish and sometimes larger mammals. So why is it that so many of these agrochemicals and pharmaceuticals are sold as mixtures? Well, that's because it's so hard to use existing chemical techniques to separate them. These molecules are essentially the same mass, the same weight, the same electronic charge. So what one needs to do is come up with a new chemical compound that will preferentially interact with just one handed molecule, then causing a change in mass. In my lab, what we're trying to do is come up with a more generalizable approach to separate enantiomers that's based on an all optical approach. So light can also be chiral. Essentially, you can polarize light to be circularly polarized, meaning that the electric field of light maps out a helix in both space and time. And the idea is that you can take light, say right-handed light, and have it preferentially interact with a right-handed molecule. So what we're doing is designing these metamaterials, these all optical filters, that enhance the interaction of chiral light with the chiral molecule. So that way when light comes through the filter, it interacts with say the right-handed molecule, that right-handed molecule gets attracted to the light, kind of like an optical handshake, and then pulled through the filter. So we wind up with a physical separation between the right-handed molecule on the bottom of the filter and the left-handed molecule on the top of the filter. So far we've made progress both in designing the filters and measuring the forces exerted by light on the molecules. They're about piconewton scale filters or piconewton scale forces rather. And moving forward, we're really excited to apply these to next generation separations for both agrochemicals and pharmaceuticals. With that, I hope you have a great uh, Dreyfus Teacher Scholar Symposium and I look forward to interacting with you in the future. Thanks, bye.